It's not the most fun job in the world, but I need to do it. This uh, the concrete, I'm going to white out here a little bit. The concrete here, uh, at some point in time, some water had gotten in the keel and probably froze and kind of upheaved this, this end of the concrete right here. It cracked it right here and pushed this end up right here. And so what I'm doing is taking this out and going to re-pour it. Uh, from here back is still where it's supposed to be. It's you know nice and flat. From here forward had bulged up, like I say, probably from water freezing under it and pushing up and expanding and pushing up. Um, this is this is actually the fiberglass hull right here on either side. So the the concrete is pretty thin right around the edges, but then it gets deep here in the middle where it goes down into the keel. So I usually start with the edge where it's thin, where I can bust that up pretty easy. You do have to be careful, you know, not to uh, gouge into your, your fiberglass hole there. But I'm going to, and you can see where it cracked right here too, and this part is higher than back here. So I'm going to just take and chip this out and clean it out and, uh, and just report before I try to, you know, I'm not going to just put carpet over it and hide it. I'm going to, I'm going to get it out and, and just report and make it. Back. I'm using a, a hammer and a chisel, but I'm also uh, getting ready to use my little uh, uh, hammer drill and, and uh, hammer action only to hit, hit the center part. I won't use that around the edges because I'd be afraid I'd punch a hole right through that fiberglass. I'm only using it here in the center to knock this uh, heavy part down right here. So all of that right there is lead and up in here is lead. It looks like flattened lead pipe or something maybe, like old lead pipe. All right, there's one and there's one and there's one there. And then there's some random little chunks of molten lead like that. Well, this layer of lead that's in here actually worked to my advantage in being able to get this concrete up a little easier. Uh, because it's, I can get it up in pretty good sized chunks. Keeping all this debris that I'm taking out of here, uh, just put it in buckets and uh, that way I can weigh it and know exactly how much weight I took out. And, you know, so I'll know what to put back. And if I do put lead in here, which I think I probably will add some more lead in here, um, you know, I may be able to use a little less concrete and you know, keep the foot well, maybe just a you know half inch deeper or whatever. Okay, so I've got two, 25 pound lead ingots that I'm gonna put back in here. And that'll let me put a little bit less concrete so I can lower it here. And then I can use some of my lead that came out as well if I if I need to. But that's, uh, that's uh, 20 pound, 25 pound ingots of soft lead. So I'm gonna, I'll just put a little concrete down in there and then set the lead down in just like a little bit of concrete and then pull, pull the concrete around it so that there's no air air cavity anywhere. And uh, put two of them in there. I, uh, like I said, I took out 30 pounds of lead. I'm gonna put 50 pounds of lead back and I haven't weighed my concrete yet. I've got to do that next. So I don't know how many bags of gravel mix to get. And I'll just get the concrete with like pea gravel size gravel in it. Make it a little bit easier to conform and pour. And uh, if it works out, uh, and like I said, I can always add a little more than the 50 pounds of lead. I've, I've got, got a couple of nice clean chunks of lead that came out of the boat that I can put back in there as well. But what I'm gonna try to do is, like I say, pour this concrete back, just level with these, uh, where the hole takes off from the keel right here. And that way I can lay fiberglass you know, just straight across and bond it here as well as up the stringers to reinforce this whole area here a little bit, as well as just seal it all off. And that should put me with the concrete floor uh, between a, between one and one and a half inches lower than it used to be, which, you know, it'd be nice to have just a touch more uh, foot room down in there. No, no big deal either way, but, um, and that'll concentrate my weight in the ballast lower uh, without sacrificing, you know, hopefully any structural integrity, that kind of thing. I am going to mix up some concrete this morning for re-pouring the concrete ballast in Compact 16 where I took out part of it and I'm uh, going to be adding a, a bit more lead and a little bit less concrete. Uh, so that's what I'm working on this morning. It is uh, 
pretty warm this morning. It's kind of drizzly, but it's pretty warm. So, figured it would be a good day to do this. <clears throat> Concrete, whether it's wet or dry, is really heavy. So, that's about all I want to carry and put up in the boat at the time. The first thing I'm going to do is wet down this uh, old concrete that I left in here. Help it get a little bit better bond. Just wet everything down, really. There's not a lot of room to work in here. So it's a small boat. And then we'll start just adding a little bit of concrete. I'll get my first chunk of lead. of lead goes in. Second 25 pound lead ingot is in. So that's 50 pounds. And this is five. Ultimately, I'm trying to put the same amount of weight in as I took out, but I'm trying to add more weight as lead and less as concrete, and then lower the concrete level in the footwell an inch or so. That's kind of my goal. Now, I've done this before on, on another boat. It's been a long time since I've done this, but, but it works well, and it uh, actually makes the performance of the boat better. Okay, I've got the concrete in place with the lead in it. I ended up putting in... Let's see, 50, 60, 70, 80, um, I ended up putting 105 pounds of lead in that, and then, you know, less concrete to get the, to get it back to, to the same approximate weight that was in there. And of course, the majority of the lead is somewhat low 
in, in it. So that should help help performance a bit. And it also gained me a full inch or a little more of a, a footwell depth. So that, but it's it's wet. I've got you got obviously got to let it let it uh, uh, dry a bit before I can give it a good finish. Okay, you can kind of see there where I poured it level with that fiberglass edge there. Before it was about an inch and a half up on above that. So I've gone, well, an inch and a quarter anyway. But now whenever I lay my fiberglass cloth across, I'll be able to bond it really good to here and up the side of the stringers here too. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since I poured this concrete. Uh, I let it cure slowly for about a week. And then I put a dehumidifier in here for another week to just pull all the moisture out. And I think it's dry enough now to where I can glass over it. It's gonna take me just a little while to sand this out. But anyway, that's the first step is just uh, getting in here by hand cause not really enough room to put a, any kind of a sander in here. So I'm gonna come in here by hand and that's a 40 grit there, I believe. I'll probably use some 40 or 60 grit and uh, rough it up and clean it out and wipe it all down good and, uh, and then start the cloth. Well, there's very little room to work in this little boat, um, you know, after the fact like this. But it's even harder to try to record what you're doing. But I've got all this sanded out and cleaned up, uh, wiped down with acetone, let it all off gas. Uh, and I've got some pieces of uh, fabric already cut. I've got some resin here mixed up. This is epoxy resin. And I'm going to pre-wet uh, the stringers under here and, and, and all this floor in here. But I'm not going to pre-wet my cloth just because I'll make such a mess trying to get it in. I'll put it in, uh, the cloth will be dry where I can fit it and then press it into the pre-wetted surface. And then I'll come back and wet out as needed. And hopefully I've got everything ready. Like I said, there's very little room to work in here, but it is doable, but it's tight. Uh, we got to kind of kind of lay down on the job a little bit. Okay. Hopefully keep it lined up. Or at least in the ballpark. This, uh, this actually is uh, uh, just 17 ounce biaxial, but I've got to piece it to have enough with what I've got on hand.
Okay, I got I got it done. Not much fun, but I got it done. But got it uh, folded up around the stringers on both sides too. Good. I did have to piece that um, 17 ounce by axial. I didn't have enough to do it in a single piece. But there is a layer of uh, uh, chop strand mat under that that's full length all the way through so, give that a few hours to cure you know uh, i will need to sand it lightly to get rid of any little meat hooks that might be sticking out here or there but uh for it you know for working in such a tight spot you know it, it turned out all right and that'll keep any rainwater or whatever that happens to run down here and capture it there and uh, let it hopefully not get down into the keel but hopefully i don't have any more rainwater in the boat now that i've sealed the uh hold of that joints and a few other little odds and ends mm -hmm. 